Today we want to know what is your favorite camera feature? Alright, welcome everyone to <laughs> Photography After Cheers. Hours. Cheers! We are back and we're going to introduce everyone. So uh, we have Sprague, Susie, Scott, and my name is Nick. We are sponsored by PAC, the Photographer's Adventure Club. You can find the link there, photoadvclub.com, and we do all that cool stuff. So um, today we're going to be talking about your camera and what your favorite feature is in your camera. And um, as always, we're going to start with Scott. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Or almost as always. Yeah. What are my favorite features on the camera? So what well, camera do you have, first of all? Let's start there so then people can... Um... I have a 5D Mark III, okay. Canon 5D Mark III. And I think one of the things that... One of the favorite features that I like on that camera is that... You know, well, it's not just that camera. It's most cameras. Is that a lot of people, when they buy their camera, they use it, like, straight out of the box. They don't realize that you can actually reprogram just about every button that's on it. And so um, I've pretty much have gone through my whole camera and I've reprogrammed most of my buttons. But the one thing that I really like the most is to use buttons that are like totally worthless, like the depth of field button, completely and totally worthless button. But you can reprogram that button. And so the way I did it is I reprogrammed it so that every time I press that button, it'll toggle between AI servo mode and one shot mode. So if my subject is holding still, it's in you know, one shot, but then when I press and hold that button, it'll automatically start tracking that subject. And so it's a great way to use like- Like an, runaway brides. Yeah, it's a great way to use like an otherwise worthless button and turning it into something that is actually pretty valuable and I use it all the time. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that. So we always go second with Susie, so we'll stick with that, and we'll, we'll save Sprague for last. So Susie, you, um, your camera is? I have a 7, 70D. I used to shoot a 7D. Um, that and bounces as well? It was horribly mangled and disfigured. <laughs> they all bounce yeah. once. <laughs> Everything is heaved in the woods. Right, right. Oh. But what I really like about the 70D and one of the features that sold me on it over the uh, 7D, which the 70 Mark II wasn't out yet. However, 70 Mark II still doesn't have this feature, and that is the handy flip out swivel. Ooh. Yeah, that is nice. Like this, which is really helpful. So when I'm shooting, um, I, I like to do landscapes or I like to do um, things where I can get a different vantage point than eye level. So whether I'm shooting up high or down low, I can tilt the screen and, and I can have it angled where it's, where it's comfortable and I can see it and I can still keep the camera in the position that I want it in. Uh, it's also a touch screen. So I have, and I know that can be kind of a, a crutch that you can fall into that trap of being dependent on the touch screen rather than your controls when we should all really be adept at changing our uh, shutter speed and our aperture and everything with our our regular controls, but I do like the. Well, I like I've, I've used it a little frame. bit lately too, and I like the um, focus that you can tap on it where you want your focus point. It's like bing, bing and it's like. That's yeah, cool, I want could, my focus there, and you just touch the screen, and, and it, it goes. goes. Yep, very cool. Yeah, I, I do it. like that. That's uh, some of the cooler features that are coming on the newer cameras. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're in uh, Phoenix, Arizona here, so the flip screen, I would say, like if you have to kneel down or lay down, there's like snakes and scorpions and spines from cactus and all this really other stuff. Really hot concrete. You can concrete. just bring it like... Mm -hmm. Those are really... just in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you yeah. can bring that way down low to the ground yeah. without having to get down and try to look through mm -hmm. the viewfinder like we have to. It's it's almost like I don't even... It's yeah. impossible. It just kneeling on the concrete in the summer is not really a good idea when it's 120 degrees out. So that comes in handy out. for that yeah. stuff. For the sure. screens are incredible. And, and I also like the way uh, the way you put it away too. You, you can flip it backwards, and now, mm -hmm. now it, it, it protects it too. So it's not you don't have to leave it out like mm -hmm. ours. So cool. 
So um, uh, that's about it. Oh, no. oh Sprague. <laughs> so, uh, so Sprague, we're yeah. over to you. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm fine and dandy. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. So uh, what is your favorite feature on uh, what camera do you have and what's your favorite feature? Well, I have a 5D Mark III and uh, I like, um, I have a tilt shift lens that I use a lot. And so one of my favorite features that I use quite a bit is uh, the focusing mode on the back of the screen because I can take it up. Um, you know, live 10 view. extras. What's that? You're talking about live view, right? Yeah, live view. Yeah, right. And the, the thing about um, the, the tilt shift lens is you have to focus them manually and you're shooting at a, on a distant object and it really helps if you can look at it in live view and, and focus it way up close because like even when you're looking through or... it. Yeah, yeah, zoom yeah. in. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is it's sort of a, a, a little bit of an error because you're also tilting the thing too, which changes the uh, focal plane just enough. And so you're constantly kind of going back and forth between focus and tilt in order to get the exposure how you uh, want it, all the, or the focus point all the way across the frame the way you want it. I mean, you might want it just blurred at one point or you know totally sharp from front to back. And so if you don't have that, it's virtually impossible to do. But with that, it's just a snap. Gotcha, gotcha, cool. Um, so I have a 5D Mark III also, and we were chatting at, before this about what some features are, and I like the favorites menu. A lot of people don't know there's actually a favorites menu in there. When they get it out of the box, like you said, you get it and just start playing with it, but there's a green menu in Canon. I'm sure Nikon has an equivalent as well, where you can save the things you use all the time, like format the card, battery levels, because I have two batteries in my camera, um, just all the different features that you use a lot, like bracketing, so I can just go right to it. I don't have to go through all the menus to find this stuff. So. I found that really useful that I could just jump into there um, on the 5D, and I think on the 70D, they put HDR buttons now. Do you have an HDR button or no? No, no. I don't think this has an HDR Oh, so button. I have an HDR button that I can just hit. If I just need to do a quick bracket, it'll actually put it into bracket mode, and I can just scroll right through the menu, and it's like a quick button. I, I could probably reprogram it, but um, that's one of the other features. And I also have, I've noticed on this one, they took all the little people off, like the running guy, the mountain, all that stuff. But what they did is they put C1, C2, and C3. And I didn't really know what it was till I started playing with it and reading the manual. <laughs> oh, Nick, manual? Nick is allergic to manuals. So, well, yeah, I, I, I probably I, didn't read the manual. I probably just asked someone. Well, I was, I was trying to read it, but my lips got tired. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's C1, C2, and C3, I believe, and you could program those to have starting settings in there. So I reprogrammed them for different instances so I can just go right to there. It's like a go-to. So if you know you do drag racing and you need these certain settings, you can set that up instead of having just the high-speed guy that's running. You can make it the actual settings that you'd use instead of guesstimating settings. Um, so I set it up for like when we do studio shoots with the models, I have a starting setting and it's just boom, it sets everything I need. It changes my white balance. It changes my everything, everything I set yeah, in there. Yeah, your shutter speed, and your it, aperture, everything, everything. that. Everything. And yeah. you save it and you just save it and I get a C1. And if we have uh, different settings for outdoor shooting, I can go to C2 like and then I can do a Like photography or light painting. Exactly. So it, it just... Yeah, Star Photography is great because if you're in the dark setting and you can't see your controls and stuff, you can just know that you're on C3 and you're at the settings that you use for success. Um, and it doesn't work all the time, but, you know, I did find those pretty useful in, the, in these cameras. It gets you in the ballpark. Yeah. So, so other features that you guys like on, on, say, cameras maybe you don't have. So, yeah, some people, you know, they, they don't like the auto settings, but I actually use them all the time. I like to use aperture priority mode, but the thing that I've been using a lot lately is um, auto ISO. And so I'll have everything on manual. So everything's on manual, my shutter speed and uh, my aperture's on manual, but then I'll, I'll use uh, auto ISO. And um, I think it's one of the, the best auto, you know, features that probably a lot of people don't even know or use about. You gotta be careful no when you use, use stuff like yeah. that, though, because if you're using it with like something that's like a flash or something like that, can it throw it way off and everything? Or no, it'll work with flash. Well, it'll work with TTL flash. Gotcha. Cool. So yeah, it's an auto feature, just like any other auto feature, and so, but um, you can lock in the two settings that are probably the most important to you: shutter speed and aperture, and yeah. then just let your ISO fluctuate as long as you know that. You know, you're not going to go over like twenty thousand. Yeah, or something. something that's yeah, way out of range. Yeah, way out of range yeah. for that camera. Gotcha. Cool. 
Cool. Um, you know, my favorite uh, feature is my panoramic feature on my iPhone that I can just do like that. I don't know why we can't do it on these, but like, yeah, who needs yeah. this? You know, yeah, yeah you could just like, boom, got this. You know, Joey Carmen, we got it. Doom, doom, done. Um, so, any other features that are on other cameras, maybe that you don't have, um, that you'd you'd want to see in here? I don't know. I only know my own camera. You only know your I love camera. it. Yeah, but I mean, I like the HDR feature surprisingly in my camera from time to time because. Um, it's still going to take a bracketed shot for you in the HDR yep. mode, so you still have the bracketed eight, um, raw files, but it's also going to give you a JPEG of the merged photo just for you to look at, and sometimes taking that and working on it in Lightroom, you come up with a, actually a pretty good picture. So. See, now, um, that's the way ours work. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. one actually doesn't do it. This one... What would you buy you it for? It, <laughs> no, when you put it in, yeah. they, they actually took it out, so when you put this uh, 7D, 7-0-D into HDR mode, Mode, um, not AEB, not bracketing, but HDR mode, it actually turns in, into all JPEGs. And so it you doesn't don't, keep the RAWs. It doesn't oh. keep the mm -hmm. RAWs. So it discards um, them. you got to be careful oh. with what yep. models you get because well, now no. it's like. That's when you have it in HDR mode. Yeah. You can shoot in bracketing mode separate. It won't compile exactly. in HDR. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But you have to go into more steps and then you have to. Yeah. With the HDR, I, do I use it as bracketing. Like you said, I don't rarely ever use the JPEG, but it's just quick, boom, I press it, go down, done. I can get three bracket shots and then back out of it. Where in this one, when you do that, you hit the HDR button and it now gives you JPEGs. So it's almost crippling you. So it's like a useless feature because now you still have to go back to the it. old way. Yeah, yeah, I don't use it. If I shoot bracketed, and I waited for one of the models to come out that had more than just three bracketed shots because the 70 and oh, the previous three. ones only had three. And this does what, five and seven? Seven, yeah, seven. three, five, and seven. Yeah. And um, and so I like that, but I am a little bit disappointed that it discards the RAWs when it does the in-camera HDR. In -camera. Yeah, because the other ones, which the, were predecessors, I mean, in terms of the technology and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know why that wasn't retained. They want to sell it. The thing cameras. I do love about this, which you guys don't have, is Wi-Fi. So uh, I yeah, like that is a good feature. I like mm. the Wi-Fi in my camera, and I like well, we're driving somewhere, and I just shot a bunch of pictures, or you're driving. You're like, put it right on Facebook, and it's like bam, I, I yeah, I can pull it right off my phone or right onto my phone, but I also can remote trigger the camera from my phone. And so you don't have uh, to buy an interval. So what's the next step? The, the, They're gonna put the like Facebook on there and like. Well, I don't know. Panasonic <laughs> just came out with a phone camera, so it's actually uh, that's like the ones with has a lens that comes out of it, but it's a phone. So they're getting into that iPhone kind of market. Yeah. But it's got a real lens and everything that comes out of it. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> busy. Is anyone there? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. How annoying is that going to be on an airplane? <laughs> well, they, they, what they need to start doing, and I've heard some of these are doing that now, is apps. They need to put apps in them where you can just be like, all right, I want to download an app for Panoramic, and now I can do it. The iPhone can yeah, do it. Yeah, that would be cool. You know, so yeah. they need to start doing that. And I, I think some of the um, manufacturers are doing that, uh, smaller ones and point and shoots and stuff, but we need them in these big cameras. We're paying $3,500, $5,000 for some of these cameras. Put good stuff in it. So um, one of the one of the things that uh, Olympus just did um, that I love, and I don't have this camera, I just tested it with B and H. They sent it out. We had a couple members test it. Is they did a firmware upgrade, and it does compositing live in the camera. So you go out and do the star shots, and you have to use star stacks usually to take lots of shots, and then you put them in to star stacks, and then make them all connected. Or Photoshop, or, or Photoshop, or wherever, whatever program you choose. This program just takes it and it com creatively composites it. So it takes, you set the interval, how long you want it to be, two seconds, five seconds, whatever, and it takes those images and it layers them all in without Photoshop, right into the program and when you're, and you watch it happen. So you watch it, so after like, you walk away for five minutes because the first like minute is like tedious. You're like, nothing's happening. And then you walk away for five minutes, you come back and you start to see them like as lines and you come back after 10 minutes and it's like, oh, and you can make it go all the, the way around. On the display, on, on the back display, of the camera. And then that you get that image mm -hmm. right That's out of really it. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's so really like, cool. So like there's, you know, that, and that was in a firmware upgrade to an old camera, to an, uh, the EM10 and EM1. And I had fun playing that. Alex McClure and I went out um, with John Duran and we took pictures and I was like, okay, this is cool stuff. We need this stuff because why should I have to come back and use star stacks? If the image looks good enough where I get it where I want it and I don't need to do other work to it, then why add extra work into my workflow? Um, or you, you don't know what you got until you get back home and you can put it all together. Whereas while it's doing the live develop in front of you, you know whether you got it or not. 
Well, they have live develop. This is different. So they had that already in there. Live develop is where you watch the picture develop like film. This is live composite where it's connecting all the pictures. The live develop would be we're in this room and we turn it on and it's slow, it's dark. Mm -hmm. And then I see you guys appear and then I stop it and say, okay, that's where I like it. So that's another feature. Why do we have to go through the lens and guess what the setting is? And I know Sony just did this where what you see is what you get. You just look at it, you set your settings, that's the picture. Mm -hmm. So cool. Well, I think we have, we have some cool features. In the comments below, let us know what your features are that are on your camera. You have some really cool cameras coming out now. Um, we're probably going to make us jealous, but you know, put them down there and let us know what is awesome in your camera and what you like to see in cameras. And hopefully um, some of these big manufacturers will see that and, and put some cool features in there. So until next time, this is After Hours. Cheers. 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 Cheers.